Hello there. What is going on, everybody? Today, we are doing a Star Wars Shatterpoint unboxing, and we have not been able to do many Star Wars unboxings lately because it is a very slow time for releases. We're going to have to wait until, I think, January for our next unboxing, but uh, this is a whole lot of gameplay in a very small box. It's the Sabotage Showdown unboxing now what this is is an entire mission pack for star wars shatterpoint if you have this game if you have the core set you have a mission pack in there and every game kind of is close to the same because you have the same setup and the same kind of objectives and this is going to totally change that plus it has a couple of token packs in here as well we're going to unbox this we're going to look at each of the new cards and uh give you an idea on what to expect from this pack and that's pretty much what we're going to do in this video if you guys want to check out more while i get this unboxed um you know we are going to be doing uh lots more giveaways we have the 12 days of life day that's running through december it's going to be running uh 12 different giveaways all throughout december so if you want to have a chance to enter to win any of those you just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos i typically announce winners towards the end of my videos so you'll have to make sure you watch all the way until the end. And that's going to do it for that box. All right. I was, I don't know why I'm doing a high-pitched voice. I was thinking about doing this in a Hondo Anaka voice, which would have been something like, Welcome, we're going to go open up the box, and it's going to be very good. Uh, yeah, I don't know why that, that doesn't, no, that's not Hondo Anaka. No. But kicking for goodness. Well that's, well, that's, that's Minsk. But, you know, same, same guy. Um, well, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got uh, Star Wars Shatterpoint. Uh, Hondo and his pirate gang are coming soon. Uh, there's uh, all that, all the notes, and then we have all of our um, credits page stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see. We got we got tokens here. Um, these ones are kind of cool to mark uh, which objectives. I mean, these, this was already on the existing tokens, uh, or at least uh, rather on the existing cards, but now you can at least mark them so you don't have to uh, try and orient the card and get confused anymore. So I thought that that's pretty cool. And we've got our cards here. Let's get a closer look at these. One thing I want to point out before we look too closely is that uh, I have my nine cards here plus the tenth, which is the, the, the explanation card. But uh, all the rest of these cards are just the same, uh, the same 10 cards in all of the different languages as well. So while I did pull out a huge thing of cards, it's really just 10 cards. All right, so here we have the uh, overall mission card. Uh, it's called Sabotage Showdown. We have this uh, symbol over here in the bottom right to differentiate it from the other ones. Um, also, it'll be helpful so you don't kind of get your cards mixed up. Um, this one is, the main difference is uh, that you've got, well, there's two main differences. One, you've only got, uh, you got two less. So you got two in the close to your side, two close to your opponent's side, and then three in the middle. So you have sort of this uh, hexagonal shape going on. Uh, and, and so, you know, you less points means a little bit more middle of the board focused uh, gameplay, a little bit more, you know, possibly better for melee uh, units, possibly better for... Uh, anybody who's more combat-oriented build uh, might benefit a little bit more for this as opposed to more of the, um, you know, movement and kind of sneaky, you know, hide and kind of come in when, when the time is right. There's going to be a lot less going on in the corners of the board. Uh, the other thing is there's going to be a shatter point uh, ability. So when you activate a unit with a shatter point card, basically it says after player chooses an allied unit to activate with a shatter point order card. The chosen unit gains uh, the uh, the, uh, the ability printed on the active struggle card until the end of the turn, uh, and then it, the the rest of the the text is kind of the same as our previous one. That basically uh, the second and third, you're gonna have a bonus objective. That's kind of what these tokens are for to help mark those. It's the same thing in the, in the mission that comes in the core box. So that is Sabotage Showdown. Uh, we're gonna look at start uh, some of our our threat one or our first our first uh, struggle cards we've got set the charges uh in all of the 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 first round versions they are all um have the outside lit up and not the center so so that's interesting that you've got uh so many lit up and they're all the same uh the only difference between these is going to be the uh reactive ability uh or the automatic ability that's going to happen when you activate somebody 
with a shatter point card. Uh, so you've got press forward here on set the charges, which is going to say at the start of the unit's activation, each character in this unit may dash. That's going to be an important one. Uh, you've got secure the exits here, which is going to have the same stuff, but regroup. Uh, and it's at the start of the unit's activation, they can re uh, remove two damage uh, or one condition from itself. And then you've got shut down the alarms. And this one has stick to the plan at the start of the unit's activation, refresh a force. So out of all of these, I think movement is by far the most important. But then again, it's sort of situational dependent. And you're not really getting to choose these anyway because it is randomly dealt. So these are the three options that we're going to have. When we look at our twos, uh, we're going to notice something very interesting in that uh, press forward, regroup, and stick to the plan are going to be present on these as well. Um, press forward, regroup, and stick to the plan. So uh, so there's not as much variation in here as I was uh, hoping in that these are the exact same abilities, just the uh, layout changes. So we, have, we need more time, uh, which gives you the two different options uh, kind of going up up, up and down the middle slightly to the right or slightly to the left uh, and then we have one here kind of doing the, kind of a similar format but just a little more exaggerated and then here we have it a little bit more diagonal uh, but basically in all three of these uh, you know we're still seeing press forward regroup and stick to the plan but we're seeing uh, a little bit uh, a little bit more centrally located stuff I guess this the I, I, if I were to go like that, those are going to be a little bit more centrally, like straight up and down the middle of the board. This one spreads it out a little bit. So I think this one is the more the more of the deviation from the norm, which are these two, um, which is interesting. Uh, but a lot of, you know, I, I, I feel like knowing these and knowing what is likely to be coming, um, you're going to have, you know, there's always one going to be on your opponent's side. There's always one going to be on your side. And there's always going to be one on the middle branch. Uh, whether it's in the exact center where you got a two two out of three chance of it being in the exact center or if it's going to be far out. So uh, so typically towards the end of round one when it's like this, uh, you want to start moving somebody to the center because it's there's a two thirds or 66 percent chance that it will be in the center. And so you, you know, got to take that into consideration. And when we go to our threes, we have a lot more variation. We've got signal to transport. We've got find the escape tunnel, and then we have get to the hangar bay. Let me line these up a little bit better here. Um, now, these also have the same uh, shatter point card abilities, regroup, stick to the plan, and press forward. But our deployments, are, or rather our objective setups, are more widely different. One thing that's interesting is that there is not a choice of top or bottom. So your third struggle is you know, there's no choice. So this is uh this is an interesting one because, you know, you, whoever like loses the second struggle might feel like, oh, that's okay. I'm going to be able to choose. And all of a sudden now that player doesn't get that same advantage. This one could be a lot more of a balanced mission pack because of that. Because now all of a sudden it doesn't mean that whoever wins the first struggle is guaranteed to win the game. I mean, and not that it was ever really a guarantee, but I feel like when your you know your your third struggle ones had the same choice, it allowed you to kind of be aggressive, win the first one, then you can kind of take your time, you know, not having to worry about the second one because if you lose that one, you'll get to choose the one of these that's more advantageous to you. And when this is not the case here, um, you really want to try and win both of the struggles if you can. So I, I think it is pretty cool that it went with only one here, um, and. Uh, that's that's something different, and then of course you also you have this one get to the hangar bay, which is just, just using the center and has none of the back or the front line, which is also really cool and uh, will kind of change up your games a little bit. So on each of these you have like two that are a little more standard and one that's more of the outlier. I feel like it's get to the hangar bay in this one as well. All right, guys, that is going to be our look at the Sabotage Showdown Mission Pack. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts if you're a Shatterpoint player. Uh, what do you think about them doing stuff like this? Uh, this was not a very expensive product, but for only 10 cards, you might, I think it was 20 bucks. Um, you know, I think some people might be saying, well, you know, gosh, that's a little uh, little steep for only 10 cards. I mean, I get, you're getting tokens, but I mean, who, do you really need more tokens? I don't know. I don't know if you want more cardboard tokens. Um, 
But I mean, at least like these are something new, I suppose. But this isn't really what you're buying. You're buying this. You're buying all the gameplay that comes with this. Um, and no, uh, I guess, of course, you know, you could use all the extra cards and give them out to your friends as long as they speak, uh, you know, English, uh, French, German, uh, Spanish, uh, or any of the other languages that are in there. Um, so I suppose it's possible, but I don't know. Let me know some of your thoughts down in the comment section. Don't forget to also check out our Discord. We have a great family-friendly Discord. You can jump in there and keep the discussion going. And I'd love to hear what you, what games you're playing this weekend. Let me know down in the comments. I will talk to you guys later. I want to thank you all so much, and big thanks to my patrons. You guys help make this channel possible, so thank you for your continued support. I will talk to you later. May the Force be with you. Live long and prosper. Be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes, and always wash your socks. Hondo washes his socks. Oh, hey, that's right. I always do. I'm Scottish now. I can't even do a Hondo accent. I'm terrible at this. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a nice day.